Hi, I'm Stephen Hayne from Archery Supplies and now we're going to look at the Marksman two-piece quiver. Now this is an Australian built company, Australian built, Australian made quiver. So it comes from Australia and there's a guy who makes these things at home, which I don't even understand today. Like why wouldn't you have these things made in China? Isn't everything made in China these days? Everything. I just, the concept of a guy sitting at home making a quiver in his backyard so to speak blows me away really does but there's lots of people who like quality and they like handcrafted merchandise and that's exactly what this quiver is so how does this compare against the Chinese quivers first off I know nothing about it so this review we're going to do just run it as we normally do we're going to compare the cheap Chinese quivers we're going to compare the American two-piece quiver which is expensive and we're going to compare this quiver so the marksman quiver is available in four five and six um six um arrow quiver um now what's different about this this is the four arrow quiver on this bow and this is the five arrow quiver so he has a different hood for each size quiver so it matches that's very very cool now i've seen how he makes this this is all handmade at home so with like he uses quality leather this is all hand stitched here um, on the side so he's aimed this at the top end market so this is not aimed for a person who's got a 200 dollars chinese traditional bow and they're going to fit a top of the line quiver to it this is the person the person who's going to buy this is a person who's got a top of the line bow and they're going to buy a top of the line quiver to go with it so the person who's going to buy the cheap Chinese quiver is probably going to be the person who brought the cheap, cheap trad bow. So let's just compare how this all works. So we're going to undo this off the bow. So one of the problems if you've got a trad bow like this bow, you've got nowhere to fit a quiver. So you need a quiver that physically attaches somehow to the bow. So let's just take this off. let's just take this off and see how it all straps on okay so this is the system here he's got a nice little mark here you can see it's quality leather this is foam in here it's very solid now the bracket here this is solid steel here um, it's a bolt into here now normally this would be a weak point so you go to you know, I normally I'd break this like it's, it's it's I don't know how he bolts it on so tight. I can see the leather, so this is solid leather here. Like he can tell me if I'm wrong. It's thick leather. Like I don't know how he shaped that. That's cool. But normally, like you think it would come loose here, but it doesn't. So he's got rubber. This is like rubber. This is some sort of velcro but it's not velcro it's something different it's kind of it's kind of sticks so the way it sticks to the bow let's just reverse engineer you're like Stephen you should have done check this out before you did the review yeah probably well how does this work Yeah, I, look, I should have read the instructions before I did the review. Oh, wow. This is what it says on the back. So, obviously... Look, there might be instructions under there on how to connect this. Now, you saw me undo this, so I'm obviously a little bit simple. So the rubber wraps around the inside of the thing, somehow. And you, it's got to wrap around this way.
This is one of my staff suppose. Then you thread this through. I think it's like, you know, like the people who are going to buy this is boys and boys aren't going to read instructions. So it's a bit hard to get that through there. Now, I, before doing this review, I clearly stuck the string in here. I clearly should have watched someone put this quiver together. And I should have had the string off. Because otherwise you're going to get that stuff. <laughs> I'm going to get that stuff. Well, the bottom is stuck really well and it's very firm and it's clearly a well made together. It's a well put together product. The grippers have two holes. So one being for the thick carbon and one being for thin carbon. They are like, it's a, it's a really nice, it's a really nice product. And if I knew how to put it together, I'm making this look really hard. And I always get a bit worried when I do these reviews that um, the person <laughs> that the person whose quiver this is is gonna then hate me. Oh look, I've done it. It's a, look, it's an interesting wrap around system. So basically the rubber is wrapping around and the rubber's actually holding this quiver in place and it's it's not going anywhere. Let's go and have a shot with this quiver that I've just bodged onto this bow without anything. Look, so the way I did it, I wrapped the rubber around, you obviously saw me did it, and I kind of pulled it back on itself with this metal bracket, and then the Velcro just holds it all into place. It's, it's very well put together quiver. Now, the issue with this quiver is the price point. It comes in different colors, I'm pretty certain. Um, that's just me guessing, but I'm pretty sure he does do it in different colors. Um, the pro problem is the price point. It's $245 Australian dollars. So in America, if you're coming from America, that's going to be costing you about $190, maybe $180 American dollars. So it's more expensive than your Thunderhorn and all those. But we have the Thunderhorn quivers to look at. So let's look at those and see how these compare. Now I've looked at two-piece quivers before for bows and they've been pretty average. So let's have a look at them. Right, so this here is your quick mount strap-on Thunderhorn quiver. This was, this was your bee's knees of two-piece quivers. Price point in Australia gonna be somewhere around towards your $200. Oh, look, look how much simpler this is. It's a simple little clips on between your limb. And then this straps on like so. It's kind of interesting. So this is a different system. So this is a wedge. Um, now, I think there's some key differences here. So this is a wedge which is pulled onto the um, limb and then you're using a rubber strap to pull it, to pull this quiver onto the limb. So you're kind of wedging this quiver up against the limb. Um, interesting. So some quick observations. So over time this will fatigue and the rubber will obviously wear out. Where on this one here, You've got Velcro here. I think this would be longer lasting, the Marksman Quiver. The, it's quite tight. It's a different, it's a different system locking down. Interesting. I 
I feel like the Marksman one I want to actually lock on tighter onto the riser. Interesting. Now, interesting. Now, the finger thing on the Thunderhorn, it's only got the wider clips, not the smaller and the larger. So if you're shooting the VAP arrows, it may not fit. Um, look, it's a well-constructed product. The hood itself, I think you'll probably find it's plastic with thin leather wrapped around it, where I'm pretty sure the Marksman is solid leather. Um, so quite a different design. And the foam in the Thunderhorn, Thunderhorn comes off easy. The foam's a bit different. It's like um, polystyrene kind of foam. So where the other foam in the Marksman is like an ether foam. So the Marksman's kind of the foam that you're probably going to shoot arrows at, where this is just very much a softer foam. Okay, because the majority of you, the majority of archers buy cheap, cheap bows, right? It's just no surprise, I'm not going to call you cheap. But the majority of archers buy a $200 recurve, so then I'm going to look at a Marksman recurve. The people who are going to buy the Marksman recurve is going to be the... Um, The people who buy the thousand dollar recurve. Now this quiver here is your buck trail two piece quiver. Now the way this bolts on, this is interesting. It's not even square. Now this comes in different colors. Now this comes in so many colors it does my head in. I'm gonna guess this is the olive but it may be the brown. I'm not saying it's brown. It's probably olive. It's olive. Um, so this is the olive one. It comes in a whole bunch of colors. Browns, dark browns, tans, grays, browns, like two-tone. So they do a different color here. You can see the stitching on the side. This is like a suede. You can see it's wrapped. So this is a thin leather. Now, the system it uses is very much like the Thunderhorn. It's a wedge system, and the wrap system is the same. The arrow grippers. Oh, the arrow grippers are interesting. Oh, look at this. Right, so the arrow gripper here, I'm going to put my finger in no pain. I'm going to try and put my finger in the Thunderhorn, lots of pain. Um, these grippers are clearly not as good on the buck trail. So one, two, three, four, five, six arrow. Um, look, I'm going to guess a price point, 90 bucks, 80 bucks, around that sort of price for the buck trail two piece quiver, which is like, it's a pretty good price point, but you can see these fingers, they're not as good as the Thunderhorn. And I'm going to say probably not as good as these ones. So, yeah, let's go into the range and let's shoot this quiver and see how they kind of stack up and let's see if it moves and vibrates after my poor attempt to mount the, mount the head to it. So, I've set up the bow, I've put some trad arrows and these, are, these arrows are one of my staff's arrows, which he doesn't know I'm using and this is one of my staff's bows that he doesn't know I'm using. So, um... These are bodkinic, bodkinic bows, so I'm pretty sure these come out of Europe. Um, and we sell them, obviously. Um, I forgot the name of the bow, but it, it's quite affordable. Um, never shot it, this is the first time shooting this bow. Now, the first thing is this head where you're sticking the um, arrows, like, I don't think he's actually used this quiver. And you normally want to sort of stick those arrows in and make some sort of dent there in the head. So. Getting the arrows in and getting the arrows out is easy. These are these are a 204 arrow, so this is like your medium-sized carbon. So your standard size carbons are 245, your next size downs are 204, your next one down, like your thin ones for target are 166. So let's just run through the gold gold tip. Tread arrows are a 245. Your skyline, um, these are skyline arrows are a I think a two, 204, your victories are 204, 
Um, I'm pretty sure your Black Eagle are a 204. They fit in really nicely. It, it's a very nice fitting quiver. So let's just have a have a shot. I've never shot this bow. I've never shot this this thing. It's just a random it's a random thing that I normally do. No vibration at all of the quiver. That was actually really surprising. Um, now, I'm really surprised about how quiet that bow was. And the other day, we obviously lost our pet rabbit. I now know who took the pet rabbit. And you're going to say, what are these things? Part of the rabbit, obviously. Um, these are bear paw. They're um, little fluffs, and he's got two of them on there. Like, did, did, you, like, did you hear that? That was just like dead. Now these are a 400 spine arrow, this is a 50 pound longbow. Rather impressed with this quiver. Hmm. Right, so before doing this review I would have gone grab the 90 buck quiver because it's cheap. Now I love Australian made. And you're going to say, well, Stephen, you own a Mercedes and I own a few other cars. I always purchased Australian-built cars. Um, and I believe in Australian-built stuff. But when you go and look, this thing is $245. And this Chinese-built quiver, the buck trail, is 90 bucks. Well, Stephen, you're asking me to spend $150 to support Australia. Well, yeah, no. Yes, no. What I'm saying is this is made in Australia and it's cool. He's he's put some time and thought and come up with a premier product. Now, let's say this was a Chinese quiver made in China. Not an Australian built quiver. It's clearly better than the Buck Trail quiver. Clearly better. Um, the holders are better. It's, um, it's a better thing. There's more work involved. I don't mind the way the Buck Trail one fits in but it's not as good the Thunderhorn's not bad I'm like I'm happy with the way that fits in and I haven't compared it but like this dual gripper thing where I can fit the 166 the 204s or a 245 and you can see like these arrows are not budging they're not vibrating down there's nothing worse than when you shoot a bow quiver and the arrows vibrate loose and they work their way down and they make a rattling sound silent that's so good like and this is the thing like when you buy a product you go go what do I want and you don't really know whether I want to spend 90 bucks or 245 dollars now one of my staff here brought this quiver for his bow and he has an expensive bow and he's like look this is the bee's knees this is the best quiver I'm gonna fork out the 245 dollar quiver because I've been shooting for years Buy once, cry once. Um, because if you buy the cheaper quiver, and although it's cheaper, like if you're not happy with it, there's no point in it. Um, now, in the past, I've never been happy with bow quivers on trad bows, and hence I've never shot them. I've shot back quivers, which you've probably seen me fiddle with a bit. They've always been rubbish. They're rubbish to get your arrows in. They're rubbish to get your arrows out. They're noisy if you're hunting because your arrows are like rattling around. This is it's compact, it's good. Very good. Look, I don't. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to sound ignorant. I don't know who the person is who makes these quivers. Um, you probably buy stuff from me. I'm sorry, I haven't kind of paid much attention. Um, I thought these quivers would be too expensive for people to buy. I was wrong. We've actually sold quite a few of these quivers. Um, I think we're the biggest supplier of these quivers in Australia. Um, and yeah, they don't apply to everyone. Like, not everyone's going to buy these quivers because most people buy a $200 bow and they're going to put a cheap quiver on it or a shoot a cheap hip quiver. 
but that is the go right there. If you're like a recreational shearer and you're like walking around the bush twanging arrows like I just did, they strap on well, they're solid, they're not moving, it's, they seem to kind of move enough. Look, it's a bit of a pain to wrap that around, but I'm pretty sure once you get used to how to do it, it wouldn't be too bad. Um, so that's the marksman quiver. I'm pretty sure he's got a video on how to do it all. and I'm pretty sure I've seen videos of him building these quivers in his backyard. Um, and a lot sort of laying up and laying up the designs. And I do like Australian built products. Um, not that I dislike the Chinese or the Germans or the American products. It's just, it's kind of cool that something's homemade, that someone's someone's gone, look, there's a need in the market for a quality product. I'm going to make a quality product, a premier product. And then and it's a small niche market. It's just like, how many, is these, how many of these quivers is he going to sell a year? Is he going to sell a hundred of them? Maybe. Um, but... I think he's done well. I think it's a it's a nice little mark. Um, I think it's pretty cool. We better get the six arrow one in. So it comes in four, five, and six arrows. I'm going to guess most people will probably go for a four, four or five arrow quiver. Um, the pretty good. Really like it. Marksman's quivers. So check them out now. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll put a link to his website on this video so you can see all the different colors of quivers he's got. Um, but very nicely, very nicely made as far as the quality of it. So I'm Stephen Hamm from Mastery Supplies. That's the Marksman Quiver. This is this longbow, which is very, very quiet and very nicely made. We should do a review on this and shoot it through and check it out. But nice little longbow, a bit different. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, just a quick snippet on these arrows. These are Ben Woods from Skylon. So this is one of my staff's trad bows, and he's made these arrows up himself. And the way he's done this is he's cut the feathers himself. And then, what's it called? We uh, join them together. Um, I think that looks awesome. This here is a wrap. Um, it's a shrink wrap, if that makes sense. So you can either dip it in water or use a hairdryer and it sticks in. And I think it just look he's just done an amazing job with them. So I always think it's cool when staff take the initiative and learn to do stuff. Um, like he's spliced that. So that's it's obviously a green and white feather. He's got one bit, two bit, three bit, four bit, five bits of feather um, versus two bits. Like that's cool. And that's what trad's about, in my opinion. You know, making arrows and. You know, come up with your unique look. So that's the arrows.